CTV News at 6 with Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Dust off your jerseys, grab your tickets, game on. Hockey is about to drop the puck on a new, albeit shortened, National Hockey League season. Players and owners reached a tentative agreement following a marathon negotiation session that lasted all night. And finally, 113 days later, hockey is now on the horizon. Our coverage tonight begins with CTV's Todd Battis. Handshakes, not high fives at the end of this one. After a 16-hour meeting, roughly the length of six hockey games, in agreement, a process that wore out both sides, leaving them more relieved than excited. We've got to dot a lot of I's, cross a lot of T's. There's still a lot of work to be done, but the basic framework of the deal has been agreed upon. Representatives must now convince their members to vote to accept it. We got the best deal we could possibly get. The new contract lasts 10 years, assuring a long period of labor peace. A salary cap, how much teams can spend on players, and pensions were the final hurdles threatening to cancel the second season in a decade. I think ultimately the owners win this one, and, and, and how do they not? Uh, look, the, the owners seven years ago wanted a 25% salary rollback or 24% salary rollback. They got that. Regardless of who's better off, players are eager to get going. Totally missed it. I mean, this is, uh, this is why I signed back here, you know, uh, to play in front of these fans. After a bitter 113-day lockout, owners and players will shrug and say, that's just business. We wanted to play, but uh, we've got the best fans in the world, so we're, uh, you know, hopefully they come back and, and understand that it was a work stoppage. It's not known whether the casual fan will return to the game, but diehards seem ready to forgive. I really feel great. I can't wait to get back to see my uh, beloved Flyers. I feel kind of angry, but, like, not really. I'm more happy that it's back. I've missed it severely. I'm, I mean, I'm a big fan, a season, season ticket holder. It's expected the NHL will opt for a 48 or 50 game schedule that would begin within two weeks. And as soon as that contract is ratified, players will begin to report to their home teams. Todd Battis, CTV News, New York. Well, as Todd touched on in his report, the big question is, do you care? For many fans, it was just too much. 113 days of seemingly never-ending escalator shots. Gary Bettman up and down while freezing cold reporters did their best to shine some hope on a, a story that seemed at times like it would never end. The league and the players know hockey fans coast to coast are hurting. But can the wounds heal? On the ice, it's all the motivation they need. Well, it's pretty cool. Their hockey heroes appear to be coming back. Will you watch? Yes, I will. I'm... Most of his line mates will too, but the coach... I personally won't watch the NHL this year because of the way uh, Mr. Bettman and Mr. Freer treated the fans and the communities. His frustration was laid out nearly a month ago in a letter. We're going on strike. Remember these guys? The stands are empty when we play every night, but we absolutely love it. They're locked out shinny plane fans who sent a letter threatening to swear off hockey forever unless the league dropped the puck by January 26th. They didn't even, they didn't even uh, respond to our letter. Whatever they were doing, it doesn't appear the return of hockey has everyone rushing to roll out a red carpet. I eventually will watch. I'm, it'll be a matter of time. Uh, not this year. No, we're going to take this year off and uh, we're going to boycott it. Some fans have moved on. I care that the NFL playoffs are on. Many unwilling to wait it out for a deal that for a long time did not seem to be coming. Uh, the NHL lockout being over has uh, sort of uh, been lost on all of us. To the average fan, it seemed to be all the same. Players in suits entering buildings. We had a brief meeting. Only to find out later. There's been some progress, but we're still apart. And while a tentative deal is done, fans seem split. Business owners are smiling, anticipating an immediate boost with the start of an NHL season. And even though the wait for fans appears over, it was a long haul. What I care about is the fact that Canadian people want to watch hockey and they're not producing hockey for us. That's what bothers me the most. There's clearly a grudge in Canada. Now the question is, will it last? As much as we're upset with everyone uh, that's involved, players and uh, owners, We'll be happy to watch hockey again. But will it be NHL hockey? Or will other leagues capitalize on the break, keeping fans elsewhere? He throws it out in front, he scores! Only time will tell. 
As you heard uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman say earlier, legal teams for the players in the league are busy crossing the T's and dotting the I's. But what about the players? With a start date coming very soon, many players, including the Vancouver Canucks, will not have long to get game ready. As we've shown you, a number of players have been busy skating and practicing at UBC, but there are several question marks surrounding the Canucks heading into a season. Canucks GM Mike Gillis is in need of a backup goalie, a third-line center, and a depth defenseman. Luongo could be traded before the start of the season, which could bring in assets. And centerman Ryan Kessler is still after or out after wrist and shoulder surgeries. And with many players overseas, some playing in the AHL, many are wondering how long it will take for the Canucks to return to their Stanley Cup final form. It's been about eight months since you guys played. How quickly can the team come back together, do you think? Mm, hopefully in 48 games. <laughs> oh, come on, it's not going to take that long. Well, we, we usually have the, the slow starts to, you know, October and November, so luckily to put that behind us, and we're right into January, usually where we go on a winning streak, so I don't know if that translates or not, but we'll see. In a press conference over the phone today, GM Mike Gillis says all of the Canucks coaches are arriving in town by tonight. Meetings are planned for tomorrow. Gillis also says the team has been preparing for a season and that it won't take long for the team to get up and running. And you can be sure our coverage of the lockout will continue tomorrow at CTV News at 5. We will have all the up-to-date details, and Myra Lawrence will have more local reaction. Now to some other news. A New Year's tradition is beginning to take form on Denman Island, and many say it's all thanks to Vancouver Island's shellfish industry. In the past years, winter storms have hammered growers and their equipment, leaving trails of debris scattered on nearby beaches. But this year, people living near Henry Bay say the mess is particularly bad. And what's worse, no one is owning up to the eyesore. CTV's Gord Curvis has a story from Denman Island. Um, there are all kinds of ropes. This is oyster blue here. We'll it's an inventory of what's just recently washed ashore in Denman Island. Trays, floats and assorted other items islanders say originates with the local shellfish industry. When this equipment goes missing, it's like why doesn't somebody notice and go looking for it? We've had 30 floats this size sitting at Henry Bay for a couple of weeks all on one big long street and nobody came looking for it. So it's it's like, don't they value their equipment? Each spring, islanders get together to hold a special cleanup of the debris from local beaches. But most of this collection came from just one couple who were walking along Henry Bay on New Year's Day. My big concern is that we, I understand uh, sea life uh, and bird life um, ingests these things thinking it's food and I've seen photos of the contents of dead birds that have starved to death because they've eaten so much plastic. Islanders say they've been complaining for more than a decade about the problem but the situation doesn't seem to be getting any better. It's really frustrating. Um, I don't know whether they depend on us to clean up the beach now because we've done it on an annual basis. I can't see a big change. Um, we still took in how many tons Pat? Four tons again last year, and with this start in 2013, it looks like we're going to have close to that again by the, the next beach cleanup. The Shellfish Growers Association does have a dumpster located here at Fanny Bay where anyone who finds their equipment can toss it into here, and the industry will look after taking care of it. As we can see today, the bin is overflowing, and obviously not all of this comes from the shellfish industry. But the growers say that anyone who finds equipment along the beach should be able to phone the association, and they'll have someone come and take care of it. But those on Demon Island who have been following this issue say that's a good theory, it just doesn't work. The Shellfish yellow. Growers Association says its members did respond quickly when they were told some of their oyster rafts had broken free recently and that it does on occasion hire someone to clean up the debris. Locals say with this much still being found on local shores, the industry's efforts are clearly not good enough. Gord Kerbis, CTV News, Denman Island. Two rock slides in two weeks along the Malahat is prompting the province to take a closer look at the risk of danger along the Trans-Canada Highway. In late December, roughly 13 cubic meters of rock fell onto the highway near Goldstream, blocking traffic for several hours. A similar but smaller slide occurred just after midnight Friday, not far from the first slide. Engineers with the Ministry of Transportation did inspect the cliff face for any loose rock before the new year, but determined there was no serious risk. But after this second fall, the province says it's not taking any chances. 
Crews are expected to inspect the section of highway near Goldstream this week and remove any loose rock. Delays, if any, are expected to be minimal. You can check thrivebc.ca for any updates. Not only are a number of people rejecting the slick, shiny new $20 bills, but the banknotes are also indigestible for thousands of vending machines. And the machine owners blame the Bank of Canada for their problems. Close to half a million machines that scan the bills need to be reprogrammed to accept the radically redesigned 20s, which are the most popular denomination in Canada. About 145 million of the new bills are now in circulation. I don't know about the new 20. My verdict's still out. Uh, if you're a parent preparing to take your kids back to school tomorrow, prepare for your child to bring something extra home in the coming week, the flu. Flu season is in full swing and doctors are warning a return to school could prompt a surge in infections. This year, the dominant flu bug is the H3N2 strain, a strain that is particularly challenging for the elderly, but also uh, it is also affecting children. Influenza cases across the province rose over Christmas, with many affected saying they felt like they were hit by a truck. They had sore throats, coughs, fevers that uh, some reported lasted days. Doctors say it's important to wash your hands frequently and cough into sleeves and if you're feeling ill doctors say the best thing you can do is stay home. Viha is still offering flu uh, clinics here on the island. Information on when and where can be found on Viha's website. Well another good way to prevent the flu is to uh, stay warm and wear a coat but for some that's easier said than done and one local salon knows it. That's why for a fourth year in a row it's brought back cuts for coats. Inside there wasn't an open chair today at Lab Salon on Johnson Street. Outside, this is what it looked like for most of the day. In exchange for a clean, warm winter coat, Lab Salon spent the day giving out free haircuts. We love doing this kind of stuff. It's really important for us as a, as a business that thrives on the community to, uh, to make sure that we're doing something to give back to the community. I come down just about every year and it's always a huge lineup, which is great. I know there's a lot of kids out there that don't have coats. I'm bringing my daughter for a haircut. All of the coats will go to the Our Place Society, which will distribute them to people in need. The salon estimates it has collected nearly 2,000 coats in two years.